Let's look at the fourth problem from ISI 2018. Now, this is a very simple problem if you know the Leibniz rule. Uh, the idea is that we are given a function g of x. We are given a function g of x. The problem looks complicated because this function is written in the integral form. So this is a function of x because if you change the upper limit and lower limit, if you change x, the value of the integral changes. So the quantity on the right hand side, the quantity on the right hand side, this integral, depends on x and anything the value of it depends on x and anything whose value depends on x is by default a function of x and we want to show that the function g of x is a constant function. The standard technique, this is a, this is a very standard problem in, in, in fact. Uh, if you are working with Piskunov or, or Marin's uh, book on single variable calculus, you must have encountered problems like this all the time. So these are the two reference books that you should use, Marin and Piskunov, single variable calculus. Uh, so what we will do is we will directly use the Leibniz rule. And it's a simple formula which, which can be found using chain rule and the fundamental theorem of calculus. It says that if a function, suppose is defined like this, g of x is defined as f1 of x to f2 of x. So the lower limit and the upper limit are uh, functions of x themselves, ht dt, something like this. And if you want to take the derivative of g, g of x, then you just do h of f2x times f2 prime x minus h of f1x times f1 prime x. So if you do not know the Leibniz rule, it's a very fundamental tool of single variable calculus and even in multivariate, multivariable calculus. Uh, you should definitely look it up in those books that I mentioned and practice some problems from it. Now if you know this rule, this becomes very simple. All I need to show that the derivative of g of x, we want to show that g prime x is 0, isn't it? Only when the derivative is 0, the function will be a constant function. It won't change, right? Because the derivative measures change. If derivative is 0, then the function is not changing. Okay, so let's, let's take the derivative of this function using the Leibniz rule. So g prime x is equal to f of 2x by 2x. Remember, I'm replacing every t by the upper limit function. So the upper limit function here is 2x. So I'm replacing t by 2x and taking the derivative of 2x minus put replace every t by the lower function. The lower function is just x. So replace every t by x and take the derivative of x. So one more time, let's look at the Leibniz rule. Replace the t, replace the t by the upper upper limit function. And then take the derivative of it. Take the derivative of the upper limit function. And similarly subtract from that the um, derivative of the lower limit function times h of the lower limit function. So what do we have here? Um, we will have, this is f of 2x divided by 2x times 2, derivative of 2x is 2, minus f of x by x. Derivative of x is 1. So you can cancel this 2 and 2. So we have g prime x, so let's let me copy it here. We have g prime x equal to f of 2x by x minus f of x by x. Now our problem says that f of 2x is equal to f of x. So just replace f of 2x by f of x and you have f of x by x minus f of x by x equal to 0.
That's what we wanted to show in the first place, that the derivative of the function g of x is 0. One thing you have to be very careful with, and do not try to take the derivative of the function f, because the problem says that the function f is continuous, but it doesn't say that the function f is differentiable. So that, that, that is an usual pitfall that sometimes students uh, fall into. But, 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 but apart from that, it's a simple application of Leibniz rule.